Welcome back to episode two of One Take Wednesday. And in this episode, we're going meta. And we're going to talk about how to make a YouTube video in one single take. What was that? Hmm, I just got a voice in my head. That voice said, that intro wasn't as good as it could have been. Do it again, do it better. Maybe you can relate to this. Well, this voice is the voice that's been in my head for a very long time across my 10 year YouTube journey. Do it again, it's not good enough. And that is something that totally sabotages new YouTubers and when you're trying to build your confidence on camera, it can totally destroy your momentum. So in this video, I wanna talk about that and work through strategies for building your confidence on camera so you can make better videos and connect with your audience. There we go again, I made a mistake, but I just rolled through it. All right, so my challenge for you is to try this. If you're a YouTuber or an aspiring one, you wanna make your own content and physically be on camera, working on your presentation is so, so important. So I'll start by saying that I know you know me on YouTube as this guy who's really confident and I, I talk semi well and I might appear extroverted, but in reality, that's nothing could be further from the truth. I'm the world's biggest introvert, honestly. In my day-to-day -day life, I speak to maybe two people maximum and I really don't say a lot. I'm very introverted in general, but the skill of being on camera is separate to that. There are people that I know that are super extroverted in day-to-day -day life, but put them on camera and they start stumbling and stuttering and they lose their train of thought instantly. Yet they're extroverted and I'm introverted and I'm appearing better on camera. Well, the reason is I followed all the things I'm about to talk about in this video. And again, if you're a new YouTuber, I'd recommend maybe doing the same if you wanna build your confidence on camera, because this is such a good skill to have and it will help you do better with your videos and come across better um, overall in day-to-day -day conversation and obviously in your videos. So, okay, with that said, I would say that the skill of doing this, just practicing making a video in one single take has benefited all of my videos, not just the one takers, but also videos where I'm cutting it up a lot and changing it around, curating it a bit more. Just the practice of speaking fluently has helped me make better and more consistent points and be a better public speaker in general. Some more benefits of the one take method is it's more authentic. When you don't edit out all the pauses and over curate your videos, your video comes across so much more real and authentic and trustworthy. And I think in 2024 and beyond, that's just so important. Your trust factor is everything. So anything you can do to build up your trust with your audience is going to be really valuable in growing your brand and your YouTube channel because people trust you more than people that over script and curate their content. Also, I found when I've posted one take videos, I've received really high engagement. People love the one take format because again, it feels real like we're just hanging out, you and me. It's, it's almost kind of like a podcast where it's just a conversation, it doesn't need to be perfect and it's more relatable. Also, probably the biggest benefit of all is one take videos are so fast to make. Literally half a day is all they take to plan, shoot, and edit them. Whereas I know from being a perfectionist in my former life as a content creator, I would take up to literally, my, I think my longest video took me three months to make in terms of planning. There's a lot of planning and research. Filming, I did it over multiple days, and editing probably took three weeks to edit. Whereas one take videos, you can do everything in half a day. So there's lots of pros. Cons, well, the con, the obvious one is that it's a lot more pressure on you to deliver a video, that's good, in one take and not make any mistakes. Two is there's less production value. Obviously it's not going to be as flashy 
or, or well manicured um, as a video that is cut up and a lot more time is spent on it. Three, there's also a risk of it being less engaging if not done well. So there are cons and there are pros, but from my experience, the pros far outweigh the cons. So again, I'd really strongly recommend trying this format um, if you are aspiring to be a YouTuber. In order to do this, however, there are two areas that you'll need to get good at. One is the planning, two is the delivery, because those are two completely separate things that contribute to the success of a good one take video. So what I would say is that it's still important to plan your video, even if you're doing it in one take, because it needs to have a structure, it needs to have substance. Even with this video here, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have been looking off screen a little bit because I've written down some really simple bullet points to somewhat keep me on track, but also make sure that I'm covering topics of substance and value that I really wanted to talk to you guys about. And just having a really basic outline, it's literally just bullet points of like three words each, helps me keep the video on track and keeps my thoughts more articulate. That's the first thing. While you can totally make a video spontaneously and think of the entire subject matter and structure as you go, and I have done this before, this is a very advanced concept and only the most experienced public speakers in the world are able to do this. So that's something that you don't wanna do from day one is throw yourself in the deep end. I remember when I was a very beginner content creator, I saw other people do this on YouTube who were extremely experienced at making videos. And I just thought if I put myself on camera and do this, I'm, an amazing speech is gonna come out. I remember I was in Christchurch in New Zealand traveling and I thought I'm gonna bring my camera and tripod and I'm gonna make the best video ever in one take. And I don't even know what it's gonna be about, but I just feel like something magical is gonna happen. And I set up my camera and I press record I guess against this beautiful backdrop and crickets. I introduced myself and my name and that's about it. I didn't know what I was talking about. So again, that's a really advanced thing to try and do. Um, make a video, one take video with no planning whatsoever, unless it's say a presentation you've done so many times over. Um, that's what a lot of the best business speakers out there can do. They can speak to an audience for three hours because they've delivered that exact material hundreds of times over and it comes naturally, kind of like muscle memory. Another important part of planning is knowing your topic. I mean, this is something that makes it so much easier to have a video in one take, is if you fully understand the topic that you're talking about, um, you've got past experience with it, and you've really articulated your thoughts in here, it's gonna be so much easier than winging it because whenever you're uncertain about something, that's when mistakes happen. So the more certainty you have around topics, so think about what are the topics you know the most about. Those are very likely the ones that are going to be the ones that would make for great take, one take videos. So know your, knowing your topic is important. However, I'd also add that not every topic is friendly of having a one take video made, especially if it's say a demonstration based video, if you're teaching someone how to use a camera or something with a lot of nuances that need to be demonstrated, that's something that is better being curated because people's time is valuable, they get bored easily and you don't wanna waste time setting things up, maybe your camera doesn't work or you have to go through a long process to do something simple. That's when it's better to curate it um, if there's any kind of demonstration involved. Um, that said, there's still heaps you can share directly in one take, in one video. Um, anything that kind of doesn't require that detailed demonstration, because again, you don't wanna bore your audience, but if you can speak passionately about a topic and you don't need too much production value or demonstration, then you know that's a good topic for a one take video like this one. Okay, next, let's move on to the delivery, the actual process of being in front of the camera and speaking words. It's scary. <laughs> I know for sure, like when I first started on YouTube, 
I came from being behind the camera. I was working as a videographer at the time and I was used to being behind the camera and I would see people on camera and they were either really confident or really unconfident. And regardless, that wasn't my problem because I was just making sure the shot looked good and that sound was working and so on. But when I first stepped in front of the camera, that's when I realized that there are very specific things that you need to do with the delivery um, to make it good. And it's something that you should continually work on um, because it's something that can be very easy or very hard. But with more practice comes better delivery. The first thing I would say about how to have a good delivery in your videos is being present in the moment. And this is why I hate teleprompters. When you're reading from a teleprompter, you're reading words that you wrote yesterday or a week ago, or just some generic script that you're not really present with. Um, and two things are going on when you're delivering a video. There's what's going on in your mind and actually fully being present with what you're saying. And then there's the speaking of it. And when you're reading from a teleprompter, all you're doing is the speaking of it. You're not fully present and unless you make extra, uh, an extra conscious effort to be present with your teleprompter reading. It's really hard to be present. And I find when you're present, that's when the best stuff comes out, the best performances, delivery, and even insights that you didn't originally have will come out. But it's really important to be present. And I know that's easier said than done, but what I would suggest with this is if you think about just having a conversation with someone, when was the last time you talked to someone that you're friends with, that you know well, and you talked about a topic you liked? It wasn't that hard, was it? It's just two people talking about things that they like, being present in the moment, having a good time, having a shared experience, and letting your thoughts just come out. If you can do that in front of someone, you can do it in front of a camera. It is harder when you are the only person but you need to think of it like that. That's really important that you're present in the moment and thinking of it like you're having a conversation. It doesn't need to be perfect. And this leads me to the number one sabotage. -er. Yeah, that's probably not a word. The number one um, thing that sabotages you as a YouTuber on camera, and that is perfectionism. I've dealt with this so much in my life. I'm a perfectionist in like every way imaginable. And when you're on camera, perfectionism just really, it bites you hard. And it sabotages you from speaking clearly because you're always thinking, is this perfect? Was that last line I delivered perfect? Was the opening of this video perfect? Or like I even know in this very video that I stumbled a little bit and I had to kind of regroup myself. And normally when you're in this perfectionist mindset, you think, oh no, I need to go back and redo that. And it becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You question every single line that you deliver. And as a result, you redo it and you redo it and you redo it. And then eventually you think, okay, that one was perfect. But then you do the next line, the same thing happens. You do it 50 times over and it still wasn't perfect. And the more you do it, the less confidence you build as a result. So, what I think about perfectionism is like, it's such a, it, it sabotages you so much. It really does. And it just makes it really hard. It's very energy draining and it's not sustainable. Like this whole one take process is enhanced by the fact that you're not sabotaging yourself from trying to hold yourself accountable to perfectionism. So really just um, what I'd really recommend for this, and this is hard to do, hard, but it's something you definitely can do. And that is just rolling through the mistakes. Again, like I did earlier in the video, you just got to roll through it, which is hard because you think, oh no, I, I could have done it better. But from just doing that, suddenly your next couple of words have so much more confidence. And like, it's like you're kind of going down a slope when, when you do that, but then you build it back up and you keep going. Whereas if you cut yourself off and you're down here, you kind of coast down here and that sabotages your entire video and makes it take way longer than it needs to. And often having high confidence on camera from doing this, just rolling through it, 
results in even better performance and delivery than if you were constantly interrupting yourself. Just like in this video, I feel like I'm getting really passionate now. And the reason is I'm not cutting myself off. I'm not saying, hey, Ben, stop. You made a mistake, do it again, do it better. Mm -mm. It's hard, but I'm reaping the reward of it from having a better performance from not interrupting myself. So I'd really just say practice rolling through the mistakes because you're going to be so much better for it. And the more you do it, the more you learn to do it and the more you do it um, subconsciously and therefore the better your videos will be. Another part of it, and this is a, again, a really hard one, but something you can and will do after time and that is just stay relaxed. Again, this is part of being present in the moment. When you're present, you're relaxed, your heart is beating slow. You're talking like you're talking to someone you know well. And when you're relaxed, you're able to have your mind going and not just your mouth. And it's really hard on camera because you feel like the pressure's there of being perfect on camera and you kind of your mind often shuts off while your mouth keeps talking. But when you're relaxed, you're able to engage your mind a lot more um, in terms of like what you're actually saying. You're able to elaborate on more points and you're able to flow through the mistakes a lot easier. So yeah, I thought this would be an interesting topic to kind of explore. I would add that if you still find yourself thinking, oh no, this is too scary, this concept of one, one take videos, just remember, you can always not post the video. Like what if you made the video with the intention of not posting it? I bet you that would build your confidence in that video if you were literally to press record and start talking, knowing there's a 100% chance you're not going to post that video. I reckon your performance would be better than if you knew you were going to post the video. So maybe it's just a matter of tricking yourself and saying, I'm not gonna post this video and then record it, watch it back, see if it's any good. If it is, then you've got a great video. The final thing I'd add is another element of self-sabotage that I even experience to this day. And that is still not feeling like my video is good enough once I've edited it and even uploaded it to YouTube unlisted. Even on my last One Take Wednesday video, I thought, hmm, yeah, that was okay, but what if it backfires? What if people hate it or it gets crickets or it ruins the algorithm for my channel? Oh, should I post it or should I just leave it and, and just move on to something else? This is something that happens to even experienced creators, but what I would say is just post it and see what happens. What's the worst that could happen? It gets zero views. So what? At least you tried it. Because trying is better than not trying because it could also do really well. And if you don't post it, you never know if it's gonna do well. And the nature of YouTube and social media is it's ever evolving and moving so quickly that if your content is crap, it will just disappear to the bottom of people's feeds and they'll move on. And whatever video you post next, they'll they're more likely to get and watch in their feeds. So there's honestly very little downside to this. It's all about building your confidence and sometimes you've got to push yourself in the deep end. I even find myself self-sabotaging with videos that I know are damn good videos, like a review of a camera or like just a really articulate video I've made. Part of me thinks and, and I've got, I find myself with my mouse hovering over the post button on my YouTube page. I think, what if one person in the comments says, you're wrong or you're a jerk or something. I don't wanna get that. Like, I don't want someone to insult me or, or tell me I'm wrong. Unfortunately, this is something that happens with every single video, by the way, but the self-sabotage thing is real and you think people are judging you. Unfortunately, that's what it is like on YouTube. That's the reality of it, but Honestly, it doesn't happen as much as you would think unless your video is highly technically co covering lots of technical stuff um, and you might not have done your homework on the video. That's when people do that. Um, and there are people out there that are just going to be haters anyway. But 
um, more often than not, comments are overwhelmingly positive and you're really doing it for those people who are there to get value from you and in, interact and engage with you. You're not there for the haters. So sometimes you just gotta push yourself in the deep end and press post, even though you don't want to. Like, it's crazy. Sometimes I will spend weeks on a video or I have spent weeks on a video and still I've left my finger hovering over the mouse. Oh, should I post this or not? It's like, I'm, that's weeks of my life right there. I'm willing to throw out at a moment's notice. It's kind of silly if you ask me, but um, it's real and it still happens. Even this video, I bet you I'm gonna go through that exact same thing. <laughs> oh, well, if you're watching this video, that's evidence that I didn't. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed episode two of One Take Wednesday. Um, yeah, any thoughts on One Take videos? Hope you got value from it. Again, I'd really encourage you to try it because this builds confidence so much faster than over curating yourself does. Even if you don't post the video, it's fine, but you just gotta practice getting momentum, getting on a roll, being present um, in the moment with your videos because the benefits far outweigh the cons. If you have any requests for future One Take Wednesday videos, let me know down below. And if you wanna watch the last One Take Wednesday here, I talk about my YouTube channel, the direction of it, and my thoughts in general about being a YouTube creator right now. That's it, peace out, catch you next time.